Here we go. Thomas going to go under center. At Utah State, the Rams are trailing the Aggies for the entire game, but they never give up and send the game into overtime. So cut for the two-point conversion. We're tied at 21. It's down to the final play of the second overtime, and Utah State goes for two. Peyton will turn, hand off. Sherman trying to get to the corner, not going to be able to do it. The Ram defense gets the stop, and CSU wins it in Logan. Fifth-ranked Nebraska volleyball comes to Moby Arena and takes the first two sets. But the Ram volleyball team will never give up and comes back to win in five. The origin of big moments like this goes back to a legacy of hard work, dedication, and desire. The same qualities that best describe those we honor in our Hall of Fame. The five athletes we honored tonight helped establish the standard on which current Ram athletes measure themselves. The never give up approach gets passed on from generation to generation and it defines Ram athletics. Don Lefty Straub competed at Colorado A&M at a time when many athletes played several sports. I'm proud to say Don's been a friend for 65 years. We first met in 1947 playing football for Bob, Coach Bob Davis. Lefty was well known for his fastball. Well, I was on the, on the baseball team with him and uh, <clears throat> caught him several times. He had a terrific fastball. He pitched all the really important games. I think he was very instrumental in leading the team to win the conference and the regional in 1950. And then the team went on to Omaha to, uh, to participate in the first Collegiate World Series. And then we went back 50 years later for a reunion there and, and Lefty was there at that time. And, Don Straub set the CSU single season record with 102 strikeouts in 1950 and went on to play professional baseball for four years. Don, one, you know, having the good physical attributes to be an athlete, he also had a very uh, strong mentality, which I think, you know, is kind of key to being a good pitcher. Lefty, congratulations to you. And I certainly think uh, in terms of, of that College World Series, event and, and all the pitching that Lefty did to get us there, he deserves a, a Hall of Fame recognition. Jerry Glide was a two-time All-American and the first ever in cross country at Colorado State. Jerry Glide to me was an inspiration and will rank as one of the all-time great distance runners uh, at Colorado State University. I think there are very, very, very few uh, two-time All-American in cross country, and I think he broke almost every record every time he ran. And the uh, 1960 cross country team led by Jerry was incredible. I don't think they lost a meet, and of course, they still rank as the highest placing of any CSU team at the NCAA championship by placing fifth. In those days, the team only had one coach who was more of a sprint coach. Jerry studied technique and shared his knowledge and work ethic with his teammates. He was smart, and uh, that's, uh, that's the kind of influence he had on me as a runner. Because of Jerry, because of his, because of his smarter approach to uh, being a better runner, my time went from like 4.39 down to uh, my best time was 4.14 in the mile. Jerry Glide was an all-conference performer who set many records in the distance events. He always uh, had a good strategy that worked for him. He was good at uh, setting his pace and, uh, and sticking with the strategy and coming out at the, uh, and winning most, most of the time. I think one of the things that uh, helped him be, you know, uh, a leader is just every time he com competed, he competed with all of his heart. I don't think I ever saw him run a bad race. Good to see you. Hey. Good to see you. Hey. How are you? I'm trying. 
Terry Clement Goldberg sets a record for the most hugs in one inning at the alumni softball game during homecoming weekend. Terry was named All-Conference, set numerous records, and led a team that won the conference in 1989 and 1990. She's by, by far the most powerful uh, softball player I've ever met. Um, throwing, hitting, fielding, big, you know, almost six foot player, and she could field just as well as a, you know, 5'3 girl. Lots of range, good power. She's just a, a player that you remember. She stands tall. She, you know, has this great command of herself. and ton of talent and just a great kid to coach. She was just a, a joy. Terry went on to coach at Colorado State and many of her players are already in the Hall of Fame. Terry was someone that we could uh, kind of relate to, especially since she had played the game and uh, especially since she had aspirations of playing in the Olympics as well. Uh, it's somebody we could look up to and, and we trusted her work ethic and, and her coaching for sure. She went on to play for Team USA at the 2001 World Games and was an alternate on the 2000 Olympic team. She went on to coach here and then of course she went and tried out for the Olympic team which, you know, we of course all thought she should not have been an alternate and made the team. She was so passionate about it. It's, it's all she wanted to do. It's all she thought about. It's all she, she ate, slept and, slept and drank softball. She gave her all to this school and this sport for, those, for the four years and beyond when she coached. And it's, it's so fun to be able to see somebody who has put in the work and the effort actually be recognized for it. It's been a long time coming. Uh, since she graduated, she probably could have been, MV, you know, could have been in the Hall of Fame. It's, uh, it's a huge accomplishment for her and it's well deserved and it's, it's, it's a due time, that's for sure. It was the fifth and deciding set in the second round of the NCAA tournament and Colorado State was down 14 to nine. But there was no talk of giving up. We ended up coming back, which is pretty much impossible. Like nine out of 10 times, you could never do that. Courtney was a huge role in that win. Um, I remember a few kills that were just the most crucial point that Allie set her this great ball and she just went off with this abandonment and aggression and she went to a whole nother level. Courtney um, made some big plays. She had a few line shots that really turned the momentum and really did bring us back. And that sends it to the Sweet 16 and it, it was a really memorable moment in Moby Arena and in volleyball history at CSU and uh, Courtney was a, played a key role in bringing us back. During Courtney's time at Colorado State, her team won two Mountain West Conference titles, one Mountain West Tournament title, and was twice named to the Mountain West All-Tournament team. Courtney was a very selfless teammate. She uh, knew when other people needed a pickup. She knew when our team needed to be picked up. Courtney was a game changer. She was definitely our go-to hitter in so many situations. Courtney Cox was absolutely an emotional leader for this team. She was a great competitor. When it was time for her to step up and play in a big match, she did it in a big way. In the year 2000, she was named second team All-American. Ram Volleyball went to the NCAA tournament every year she played. I remember her at UCLA, we played against them and she was um, unstoppable. So she is so deserving of this award in so many ways. I'm so proud of her. She's so deserving. Um, it's an honor that I'm privileged to say I played with her at CSU. The Rams final game of the 1994 Western Athletic Conference season was at Fresno State. Win and Colorado State football's first ever WAC title trophy will be in their hands. But the team fell behind 24-3 early in the game. Ray Jackson never even considered giving up. He knew it was time to reach for the goal. There's the snap and it's blocked! Ray Jackson blocks the punt, picks up the football at the 25, he's at the 10, 5, touchdown Colorado State, and they have taken the lead! Ray Jackson blocks the punt! And I can still right now, 18 years later, 20 years later, I can see Ray and Fresno coming in late in the game, blocking a punt, picking it up and scoring, those big long strides, 
nobody could tackle him. And you know, that was huge. I mean, that, obviously that was the, the, the game that clinched the, the WAC conference for us. And, you know, anybody that saw us that year knew we were, it's almost like we were a team of destiny. And I'll never forget Ray Jackson blocked a punt against Fresno State. That was a key block to, to win that game. And uh, that's the type of player he was. When I get my ring, I'll show you guys that big nugget. It's going to look pretty. The Rams won the WAC title in 1994 and 1995. And Ray Jackson was a first team all WAC selection in 1995. He finished his career as the all time leader in interceptions at Colorado State. I also remember the the big play he had at New Mexico. Ray intercepted the ball in the end zone against that New Mexico in the last play. They're throwing it up to try to get the win. He picks it off in the end zone and uh, was trying to run it out as the time is expiring. Andre still tackled him. I, I never let him forget that when uh, Ray was going to go score. But that that was Ray's personality, man. He he, he did everything, you know, with a lot of uh, energy and, and big. He he's been always a player to have that flair about him. You go go, you good. Man coverage, good player back at there in the secondary, but all of a sudden, a big play, he'd come up with that interception, and once he got in his hands, he was gone. Ray went on to play in the NFL for five years, and now serves as the director of player development for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ray was just a, a, a charismatic player in person, and, and the players really uh, gravitated to him. Not only because he was such a good player, but just because of the type of person he was a great leader. That was kind of the golden era. He started, he helped start that thing out. We started winning some games, some championships, and uh, it was his attitude, his locker room presence, his belief that we could win as a team. Ray is very deserving of this honor. He did everything. He did everything. He played special teams, tremendous athlete, tremendous everything he had poise he had you know he had the swag you know he he just had it all man and this is a great honor for him and, and i'm very proud of him i wish him all the best and uh, you know like i said he's overdue for this because he's he, he's as good as it gets at, that has worn the green and gold tonight we pay tribute to the 2011 hall of fame class these athletes deserve recognition for all they've done for the ram community they motivate and inspire us with their competitive desire and their never give up attitude. They serve as shining examples of Ram Pride.